This is Isaiah 13 and 1, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. I'd like to start off by saying, Kol Haloyim La, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rehakai Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS. Shalom to the elect. Yeah, so this is Isaiah 13 and 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Yeah, because just like the prophet Isaiah, the prophets of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah today have the same vision of prophecy. You know, and what's that? That's the downfall of Babylon, which is America. You know? So it's the destruction of Babylon. Destruction of America. It says, Lift ye up a banner upon a high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. You're right. And the banner is these scriptures, you know? It's this truth. It's the word. You know? The wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You know, and that has gone forth throughout the four corners of the earth. You know, the high mountain, that represents what? That represents America. You know, let's see, because if you go to, uh, one second, I think it's Jeremiah 31. Let's see. Right, yeah, so Jeremiah 31 and 7, it says what? For thus saith the Lord, Sing with the gladness of Jacob and shout among the chief of nations, right? The chief of nations, which is America as well, right? So, yeah, back in Isaiah 31, slide in a second, 13. Yeah, so it says, it says, lift up a banner, right? Pushing out this word, you know, the, uh, the Bible, the scriptures, the word of the Lord upon a high mountain. So yeah, those are the brothers in GMS, you know, and, and like-minded brothers that's going out there week after week, day after day, pushing the word of the Lord, you know, in this uh in this wicked society. Exalt the voice upon onto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles, right? And we understand that the nobles are what? The nobles are these like these politicians, these presidents, and ultimately the elites. And they hear this word. This word is going to them. How do we know that they're hearing the word? Because look at what's going on with uh with the YouTube and stuff. Just for an example, brother's putting up certain videos and it's getting taken down with like within like 30 seconds. You know, they're trying to stop the word from going out, but we understand that that's not going to happen. Right. So it says, this is verse three. And I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger even them that rejoice in my highness, right? And we know based in Jeremiah 1 and 5, we know that what? That the sanctified ones are is the uh, men of the Lord, the right, the prophets. And the mighty ones, those are the angels, you know? So yeah, so it says, because the Lord basically commanded us to go out and push this word, man. The prophets, you know? Let me get, let me get that actually. Jeremiah uh, 1 and 5. It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Right? So before the Lord already had this set up, man, before men were, before we were born, before we, we came out, you know, the Lord already said, I, y'all, right, you're going to be a prophet. You know, you're going to go out, you know what I mean, and push this word. Let's see what the word, I'm going to go into the word sanctify real quick. Right, hold on, it's like, yeah. The computer's a little slow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Right, so sanctify ones means to set apart. Right, um, to be honored, to be holy. Right, holy meaning separate. So the Lord from, from in the womb, before we was even born, the Lord already said, I, these men, 
this is their lot. They're going to be separate from the rest of the world, you know, and the rest of the nations. They're going to be the ones that's going to push my word, you know. So, yeah, back, what was we at? That was Isaiah 13 and 3. It says, yes, I have commanded my sanctified ones, yeah, the ones that he set apart. I have also called my mighty ones from my anger, you know, that's the angels, even them that rejoice in my highness, Right. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of battle, right? And the noise of the multitude in the mountains, that's pertaining to these different governments and their militaries, you know? A tumultuous noise of the kingdom of nations gathered together, you know? When we just read, well, and if you go to like uh, Joel 3 and 12, you know, let me, let me get that. Joel chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, Let the heathen be wakened and come to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, for there I will sit, which Yahweh Shapat means Yahweh, Yahweh judges, for there I will sit to judge all the the heathen round about, right? So that's where it's going to go down at, man, in the so-called uh, Middle East, you know? That's where all these nations are going to be gathered, and that's when the Lord is going to judge them, you know? And, you know, it says mustered up to the battle. We know from, we know that in Proverbs 21 and 1, it says, just paraphrasing it, it says the king's hand is in, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, you know? So the, so the Lord is basically... He's mustering this thing up, man. He's controlling this on both sides, man, to get these heathen nations, you know, all riled up, getting prepared for war, you know? Verse 5, it says, They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Right. And, you know, indignation meaning righteous anger. And like when we, what's his uh, what's his weapons of, of indignation? That's the nukes, man. You know, that's the nukes, along with the with the uh, with the fire from the chariots, you know. But that the nukes, that's gonna be the ICBM missiles. That's the that's the weapons, you know. How do we know that? Let's go to Isaiah fifty-four. Right, Isaiah 54. Right, it says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Right, so you know the smith, those goals, that's like them scientists. You know, so the Lord basically put it in these scientists, like, like mine, basically to make these weapons, you know, ultimately for... The day of the Lord's vengeance, man, for the day of the Lord's wrath, man. He had these scientists, these uh, heathen scientists basically make these uh, these nukes and all these weapons that ultimately when the time comes to be used, the Lord is going to put his spirit on it and is going to do his will. Mm -hmm. um, let's go. Where were we at? Where was that? Five? No. Verse six. It says. How, it says, how ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the almighty. Right? Because this is the vision of the complete destruction of uh, of Babylon, you know, which is America. You know, and we see that the Lord is putting those pieces together now, you know, with the, the wars and the rumors of wars and, you know, with the plagues coming down, just the, the chip coming, you know, so we know that, which is the MOTB. You know that uh, that that cashless society, all of these things are playing out for this ultimate. You know what I mean, you would call it a show, I guess a showdown, but it ain't really a showdown. It's gonna be when these people, when these when these other nations meet their fate, man. But they're gonna be destroyed, right? It says, therefore shall all hands be fate, and every man's heart shall melt, man. Yeah, because that's gonna be a straight destruction, man. It ain't gonna be. It's not even gonna be a battle, man. It's gonna be just just. The destruction, man. The Lord is going to show his power in that day. It says, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall hold, shall take hold of them. 
they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, right? And we know that. That's like those uh, birth pains. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Shall be as flames, right? Because, you know, this is the Lord's terror, man. You know, people are going to be getting burnt up. It's going People going to be basically getting annihilated, like, instantly, man. You know, plus with the fire of the, from the chariots. It's just going to be something never seen before, man. Like, you can't even fathom how it's going to go down. We know, like, from reading in the scriptures of how Sodom and Gomorrah went out. But this is going to be on a whole nother, And it's going to be in that fashion, but just on a whole nother scale, you know? So verse 9, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. Which land is that? That's, that's Babylon, which is America. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Right? Because when the Lord is coming, because the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, man. So that that's like when you go to uh, like an Amos, right? And it, let, me, let me not paraphrase it. Amos 5. Right, because when you go to like Amos 5 and 18, what does it say? It says, woe to you, unto you, destruction unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Right? So it's basically a question like, what, what is, what's the end to you? Like, you know, because the, from these other philosophies like the christian doctrine and stuff they basically say that what that the lord that everybody is saved that you could sin that the lord is basically coming down to save everyone but that's contrary to the scriptures man because we understand from reading when you actually read what does it say it says the, i come not think not that i come to bring peace but a sword man so i get one second second oh man so yeah where we at we are in what yeah so we Amos right 5 and 18 yeah so it says woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord to what end is it, end is it for you the day of the Lord is darkness is not light as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into a house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. You're right. It's Cause it's like you and the day of the Lord is gonna be straight destruction, straight terror. You know, the slain of the Lord shall be many. Or will I get that after that? But yeah, basically meaning like what? If you you might get away from one one like uh one problem, one terror, right? Like you may be running, you may get away from one thing and then right around the corner is something else, man. You, so basically, you can't escape, you know? Let's get Isaiah 66. And verse 16, it says, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, the slain of the Lord, the slain of the Lord shall be, plant, shall be many. Right, yeah, man. So, you know, we know that his sword is the wicked. Ultimately, his sword is those uh, those nukes. But you know, even before that, man, like Jacob's trouble, you know, it's just gonna be just gonna be just a a purging process, man. The wicked is gonna be getting destroyed. Two thirds of all people, you know. And then when the Lord comes down with the chariots, that's for those uh, that's for that's for Babylon specifically. So where we at, man? Where was we at? We was in. Uh, verse who is it? Isaiah 13 and 10 right it says for the stars of the heaven and the constellations thereof for the stars of the heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light the sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall now cause her light to shine right because the, after that nuclear fallout you know that smoke it's going to cover it up man it's going to be mad it's gonna be mad nukes being hit at this place, man. Like, if you Google how many like nukes they got, man, it's crazy, and they all gonna be let off. So the sky is gonna be dark, man. Let's go verse eleven. It says, 
and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, which is sin upon sin. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. We know the proud, you know, it definitely is Esau and will lay the and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Right. Because what? Let's get uh, what's that? I want to get. You can get Obadiah. You can, it's a lot of scriptures that speak on. Matter of fact, let me get the first one I want to get is what? I want to go to Proverbs. Now I go to Micah 2 and 1. Go to Micah. Right? It says, Woe to them, destruction to them that devise iniquity. Right? And work evil upon their beds when the morning is light, they practice it. You know, because all the. Why they think of this, man, they, this is talking about Esau. They're thinking of ways to just bring more sin to the world, man. From what? From their philosophies, you know, feminism, the homosexuality is at an all-time high. Their unrighteous decree, just their whole way of life, man. The whole way of living in Babylon, you know, is iniquity. It says when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands, right? And how we know it's in the power of their hands? Because in Job... It says what? That the the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, man. Let me get that real quick. It's like, yeah, my freaking computer keeps uh keeps freezing. Joke nine. Yep, so Job nine and And 24. It's like, man, this freaking computer. Right. Job 9 and 24 says what? The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Which, and he covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Right. Because, like, again, these, these Edomites, which is the so-called white man, they practice day and night they think day and night they meditate day and night on how to bring more iniquity you know in revelation just just uh paraphrasing it it says what that he's basically the, supposed to take peace from the earth man and that's what he does so that's his uh that's his that's his that's his that's what he was do, that's what he was made for ultimately man that's his purpose you know let's go to uh i want to get a little more let's go to isaiah 26 right for he bringeth down them that dwell on high the lofty city which is what which is uh which is America he layeth it low he layeth it low even to the ground he bringeth it even to dust yeah because when the Lord is done with this place man it's going to be nothing man it's going to be a desert where we're uh where unclean spirits and unclean animals are going to dwell, man. This ain't going to be, this ain't it, man. This place is going to be brought low, man, Des desolate, man. So that's, and that's another reason why a lot of these nations, these other nations, these foreigners, they're getting out of here, man. You know, starting even before, but with the, after the, uh, the, the pandemic and everything, man, these, uh, these other, these other, uh, nations, man, they, they, they packed their bags, man. And they was getting up out of here. They was like, cause it ain't, it ain't what it was, you know? Before Babylon looked at as a place, you know, you come over here, you set up shop, and you and you go and prosper, man. You gonna make money, and you going you gonna live good. You send your money back to um to your country, and you live good. But that's slowly deteriorating, well, fastly deteriorating, man. It's, it's basically there's no value here, man. Let's keep going. Let's go to uh. It says, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Right. Talking about what? Talking about um, America, man, because that's America is referred to by, you know, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, you know, Babylon, virgin daughter of Babylon, you know, because it, it never went down over here before, man. So, you know, all of those, uh, all of these uh, wars and everything, you know, like nothing really never happened here. So 
Yeah, so it says come. So I, it says come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, right? There is. This is place is going to be through, man. O daughter of the Chaldeans, but thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate, right? Because after the Lord is done with this place, man, it's going to be done. You're not going to know. You're not even going to know what's going on. Like you're not even going to know. Anywhere from anywhere, you know, New York from Chicago, like you're not going to know. It's just going to be a straight desert, Un unclean, unclean spirits, unclean animals, man. Uh, I want to get a little more. Let me go to Isaiah. Chapter two. Chapter 2 and verse 11. Right. It says, The lofty looks of men shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord and the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah alone shall be exalted in that day. Right? So it ain't gonna be no everybody is the Lord's gonna show his true power in that day, man. And then it's gonna it ain't gonna be none of this pride, man, none of this extra stuff going on, you know. Because America is a proud nation. Esau is proud. And even two-thirds of our people are proud, man. And they all going to be brought low, man. Destroyed. So where was we at? Uh, we was at verse 12, right? And we on verse 12, yeah. Not low as well, you know, I won't go into the whole thing, but we'll just get some of it. It says, and I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir, right? So, you know, during those days, a man is gonna be more precious than fine gold, why? Because the Lord is gonna raise a standard for his men, the ones that believe, the elect, you know, brothers going, certain brothers gonna have spiritual powers, but ultimately, the Lord's men are gonna be taken care of in that day, they're gonna know what's going on, they're gonna have that confidence, you know? They're gonna have that confidence where everybody's gonna be bugging out that knowledge that wisdom knowledge is going to be the stability man we're going to know what's going on we already was preparing for this in a sense man and the lord is going and i mean he's going to see us through while a lot of people the lord is going to just turn his back on y'all let's go to isaiah 32 to get to build on that a little bit let me see right it says, and a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. The wind is that destruction, you know, that's going to come to this place. And a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Right. So during that time, the men of the Lord are going to be the symbol of strength. You know, through the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, his men are going to be that's who you that's who you going you're going to know it's going to be the separation again you know it's going to be shown on like who the lord is with and who the lord was dealing with and who the lord wasn't dealing with man you know and that's why when you go into isaiah 4 and 1 you know like the brothers love this you know this is it says that in that day seven women seven just meaning a completion shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name and take away our reproach. Right? Because women are going, you know, women always flock to power and strength, right? But now, in, in this society, what, what's the symbol of that? Money, right? Wealth. Well, when this dollar crashes and when it's just, a, when it's like all out hell, when this government is broken down, when it's no, when it's over, you know? They're gonna be flocking. Yeah, they're gonna be flocking to the men of the Lord. Flock yet, my uh my phone had died. But yeah, man, so yeah, during those times, the women are gonna go with what the power is, man. And the Lord is gonna give us the power. And then, you know, we gonna either the Lord is gonna put that spirit of mercy on us to like, you know, bring them women in, or we're gonna give us the spirit to reject them, man, and that's just their fate. You know, like, nah, go deal with what you got to deal with, you know, or, you know, if you were humble, you know, it's all on the Lord. But yeah, you know, not to be long-winded, man, 
you know, Lord's will that was edifying. And I want to say, Kol Haloyim La, Yahweh Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Hashem, Rekak Rekdash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS. Until next time, Shalom.